In this tutorial, I wanted to replicate the cinematic title reveal effect Jordi did on Premiere Basics using Adobe Premiere, but this time on the free video editor Shotcut. So stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. Before we get started, this tutorial is done on Shotcut version 21.05.18. Now, in order for me to show you how this tutorial works, I'm going to load three tracks. So all you have to do is go to this little three lines here at the very left. We're going to load three video tracks. One, another one, two, and three. And I'm going to show you why this matters later. So the first thing we're going to need to do is work on the main title or the upright version of the title. And all you have to do is go to Open Other, choose Text, and then type in the title that you want to use. In this instance, we're going to say Cinematic Title, and click OK. Once it's on your screen, you just drag it into the topmost track here. And so right now, this is what we have. Pretty simple so far. So while it's selected, we're now going to go into Text Simple, the filter, and we're going to make some changes. I'm going to change the font to Gotham, which is a little bit more cinematic. Um, I just unclick use font size. I'm going to use, let's say, 70. There. Reclicked it. I don't know why I unclicked it, but I just reclicked it. Um, and I think that's it. Just so I have some guides to go by, I'm going to click this grid icon here to give us a basic guide to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this all the way up here so that the bottom of the text just touches that center guide right there. This horizontal line right here is what I'm going to use as the reference of where the title is going to be popping from. Uh, so that's why I put that guide there. So, you know, whenever I do videos, I always use this. It's very helpful. Um, and so, especially when you're trying to line things up and you have all these different choices. So right now I'm using a two by two grid, but you can also use a three by three. You can use a four by four or any of the other versions that they have here just so you have something you have you have a way to align images and videos and text so that's what I'm doing is I'm using this horizontal line as a guideline so that I can align my text so now that we have that there what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the very beginning of the track here and I'm going to add keyframes. But since I already have the text perfectly aligned the way it is right now, this is actually where I want the text to end. And so what I want to do is I want to go to the very end of this, uh, of this track here, of this video 
or whatever this thing is and mark that and lock it in using the keyframe icon as the end point. I'm going to tell it that's where I want you to end. Now I'm going to go to the very beginning and I want to tell it where I want it to start. And so because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this cinematic title appear, I'm actually going to drag it below the horizon so that it's going to start there. And then when you play it, it then emerges from the horizon, again, represented by this horizontal line. Play it again. And actually, I think it is rising a little too slow. So I actually want to shorten the time that it takes for it to rise from the horizon. And because I've shortened this part right here, um, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go back to the keyframe and add another keyframe and telling it again to begin under the horizon and, and end above the horizon. So let me just line this up as close as I can. Let's see one more tick. Okay, now let's see how fast this thing goes. Okay, it's a little better. Um, I'm actually going to move it just by a couple of pixels right there. Again, let's play it. There you go, just right. So let's go back to the timeline. Let's turn the guides off, let's turn this off. And so this is the first part of the emerging cinematic title. Okay, now we need to make a carbon copy, a mirror image of this that does the total opposite of what this thing is doing. And so let's bring back the guideline. So if we want this to appear from below this horizon to above the horizon, what we want its mirror image to do is to start above the horizon and then move below the horizon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this and then go into the track below it and I'm gonna paste it, right? Um, and make sure that they're perfectly aligned. Right now, you're not going to see anything because it's just a carbon copy of the one on top. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the one on top invisible by clicking this little eye icon right here that represents hide. Okay, so now you're seeing the exact same thing, but actually you're looking at the one on this track, on this one here, not this top one right there. Okay. So we're working on this track here, the second track. Uh, you know what? Let me make it a little bigger so it's easier to see here, right there. So we're working on this second one right here. And again, I haven't done anything. I just made a carbon copy of the top one. And because I copied this file and pasted it here, not only did it copy the text, the settings and everything, it also copied all the filters. So thankfully we only have one filter and this it's called text simple. But in order to create a mirror image, what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna get add another filter. And that filter is called flip. And all of a sudden, if you notice, it flipped whatever we had upside down. And now, not only did it flip it upside down, it also flipped the filter. So instead of it going down below the horizon to above the horizon, it now started from above the horizon going to below the horizon, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. So we didn't even need to do anything to the keyframes. It just did it itself. It just did a mirror image, a flip image of 
what we were trying to copy. I just wanted to make sure that I pointed out that there is a mirror filter. It's called mirror. But that's not what we want to do in this instance. We actually want to use this one called flip. And that's exactly what we're using uh, on, on this particular track right here. So we're using the flip filter, not the mirror filter. So again, this is what that looks like. Now, if I make the top track visible now, you're, you'll now see an overlap and this is what it's going to look like. So all we need to do now, let, let me find a uh, an overlap point where both of them overlap. So all we need to do now is find a way to cover up where they overlap. So they look like they're emerging from each other. Right now, it just, it doesn't look right. And the way we're gonna do that is use masks. So first, to make our lives easier, I'm now gonna make this track, which is V2, invisible so that all we're seeing is the very top track, which is V3. And that's what we're seeing. To make our lives even easier, and I told you guys there's a reason why I added a third track. Um, right now, what this really represents is text on top of a transparent background. And so the black is just representing a transparent background. And if we don't put a background behind it, we're not really going to see certain effects, especially with regards to masks. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to open other, and I'm just gonna add some random color that is not black. Uh, let's say this color here, very bright red. And I'm gonna drag that all the way to the bottom here and size it just right. Okay. So now, instead of you seeing text with a black background, you're actually seeing a red background because what's happening is the background is transparent and you're seeing all the way through to this bottom track right here. So one thing that bugs me on the filters is whenever you activate the simple, the text simple filter, it gives you an automatic thickness of three. Let's actually remove the thickness, bring it to zero so that we don't see the, the outline. Same as here on this one here. Um, let's just remove the thickness here so that it's just zero and zero. Okay, then let's make that invisible. So once again, this is what we have. And don't worry about the red background. We're going to remove that later. Okay. Um, we're keeping the guidelines there to help me indicate where the horizon is, where we want the text to rise, to emerge from, right? So what I'm going to need to do is anything below this middle line needs to be invisible. I should not be able to see any part of, of the text. Like right now, if the text is below this horizon, it needs to be invisible. Only as it emerges above the horizon, so here, in this instance here, only this part here above the horizon is going to be visible. Anything else is invisible. And so to do that, once we have that track selected, that item selected, we go to filters and I'm going to select mask. And because the shape is going to be really simple, we're going to choose mask simple shape right there. So to help us see what we're doing, I'm going to leave the current default setting under operation to overwrite so that we can see where the mask is located, represented by this black box. 
I'm also going to remove the feathering around it by setting the softness to zero so that we have a very solid rectangle. Now I'm going to need to increase the width of the rectangle so that it fully covers the title. I'll actually even ex extend it a little farther from the edge so that we have some play there. Okay, so now that we have that, I now need to move this box below this horizon because anything below this horizon, remember, is represented by an, something invisible or something that should not be visible. And so to do that, we're going to go over to vertical here and move this around. See this? and actually move it below the horizon. And when you get closer, it's a little harder to make it more a little exact. So once it gets close like that, I now go into the numbers here and I use the scroller on my mouse to then pinpoint the exact pixel where I want that box to be located, which is right around there, right? So right now it's not going to make sense because you're seeing the opposite of what I want you to see. All I want to do is I want to be able to cover this part here that's represented by black and tell it that I want you to put a mask there so that anything that is represented by this black area is now invisible. And the way to do that once we've figured everything out is now to change the operation setting from instead of overwrite to subtract. Look, now it disappeared. So anything that was in this box here, make invisible. Anything that emerges from that black box, again, let's go back to overwrite. Anything that emerges out of this black box now becomes visible. So let's make that section invisible by clicking again, subtract. And then I'm going to press play. Let's remove the guidelines here so it's a little easier. So this is exactly the effect that we wanted right there. Right, so we got the first part. Now we've got, we want to worry about the mirror image that emerges from the bottom of this that does the diametric opposite of what this thing does. And so why don't we get this main title out of the way by making it invisible for now by selecting again that hide icon. Let's go back in here, select this icon and make that visible. And again, we're going to need to add a mask to this one. So while that's selected, Again, let's click the plus icon. Let's type mask. And again, we're gonna choose mask simple shape. Let's bring back the grids so we know where the horizon is, is right there. I don't want the feathering. So again, we're gonna move softness all the way to zero. And then I want the width to extend beyond the text. And then I want to move the box using the vertical setting. Try to get it as close as possible. Um, actually, the invisible part needs to be above the horizon this time. Again, everything we do is totally the opposite of what we did in that previous one. And so that's pretty close. And then I'm gonna go into these settings right here. While that's selected, I'm going to scroll my mouse scroller and try to get as close to that area as possible. Again, while the black box is invisible, this is what that's doing, right? And once we get the desired effect, I'm now going to go back to the operation settings and I'm going to choose subtract, making this part invisible. So now this is what it's going to happen. 
Okay, so let's remove the guidelines. Let's bring back this V3 track so that both of them are there. Let me X this thing out here. Let's start from the very beginning and let's see what it does. Boom. And it's moving at right about the exact speed that I wanted it to move. Now let's add a little bit of realism to this by changing, let's, let me select it here. Uh, let's go to the very end. Um, I wanna make sure that this upside down version of the title looks like it's a reflection of this title from above. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna click the plus icon again, and I'm gonna choose opacity. And I'm just going to drop the opacity of this bottom text just by a little bit so that it's not as bright as the top one. Let's say 62. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the desired effect, um, we don't have to worry about the transparency anymore. So actually I can select this bottom track and I can delete it. And now, last but not least, all we need to do is add the background image. So in this particular one, I'm going to be choosing, let me find it here, this image right there. And so I'm gonna drag that right into that bottom track, right there. And I'm gonna size it exactly the same size as the other two tracks. And so this is what we have. Cool, right? So let me render this so you get the full effect. And again, you can play around with the opacity filter on the second track. Here, let me bring it up and down so you see what it looks like. So you can actually make it a little bit more transparent, kind of like that. I mean, that looks cool. Let's see what that looks like. make it a little bit more realistic. And there you have it, the cinematic title reveal tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you again later. I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't yet, go visit my channel. I'm sure you'll find tons of shortcut related videos. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when I drop a new shortcut related tutorial. Every video on my channel was done on shortcut. So aside from examples of what shortcut can do, you can also visit my playlist of tips and tutorials, all geared toward the beginner. Visit my shortcut tips and tricks playlist and learn all the tips and tricks I've learned during my journey toward video editing. So once again, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.